Hi everyone, this is Gleb Bakhmatov. I have recently received a question from Anastasia or Anastasia. And the gist of the question was, if I have a GraphQL endpoint and all my requests have different operation name, can I return different fixtures or stubs or marks, not only for different operations like she shown here, but for the same operation can I return different responses on different calls? For example, on the operation, I don't know, get all to do's, return first time, no fixtures, when the second time it's called, maybe return another fixture, and so on. So that you can encode the entire backend mockup. So you operate the application, it executes GraphQL calls, and you return different fixtures for different GraphQL calls, so that you mark entire backend. So this is a way to mark it in this uh, you know, code screenshot, in a single interceptor, right? Where you say all the calls to GraphQL have to go through this function to look at the body operation name and then have a giant switch statement and for each case do something else. Maybe keep a count of the calls. So you can return different fixture for a different call using rest.send and a fixture. So how can we do this better? So I have this example in my to do GraphQL example. Right now, I'm just returning, you know, whatever the server returns. So this is not stopped. And let's see how I can, first of all, confirm that I can return different fixture for different call. So let's say I reload the page. Well, it actually executes this call again, right? And again, it fetches two to-dos, right? There are two calls, one on the first visit, another one on reload. Now, I can repeat it a couple of times. Right, just to simulate the behavior of application calling the endpoint several times. So let's do something fun. In this project, I do have different fixtures. So I have zero to do's, one to do, two to do's. So let's say how I can on the first visit intercept the GraphQL call and return zero to do's and not two like the server has right now. Okay. So because the call is is made on the visit, we need to intercept it beforehand. So here's where I can say, you know, any post call or anything like that. But I actually have a different syntax. In previous videos, I've shown how to set a header on every GraphQL call, right? Uh, using uh, GraphQL middleware, so that I can distinguish all calls, not by looking inside the request body, but by just header. This allows me to intercept the call using something like this. Any call going to URL slash using the post method with header. And here's the header that I am using in my application, GQL operation name, I believe. And now, you know, what does my application do? Well, the first one is get all to do. So I can see it in the network tab. So let's reload. All right, so I'm doing this fetch and I can bring it up, increase the size a little bit, request header, GraphQL operation name is all to do's. Okay, so if I am asking for all to do's, then I can respond with a fixture and my first fixture will be zero JSON, but doesn't have any to do's. Okay, so what do we see right now? Right. We see that we are not getting any to do's from the server and we can confirm it by giving it an alias. Let's say first. We'll wait for the first to happen to make sure it happens. And then we can say um, to do uh, get all elements of class to do should have length zero. OK, so we just confirmed that the post has happened, that there are no to do. By the way, I actually don't like using should have length zero to confirm that the element doesn't exist because look at this. It says expected and defined to have a length of zero. I say more explicitly should not exist. I think this is much clearer. Okay, so let's say the application calls the method again. Well, notice it executed get localhost intercept again and used it. And again, it has no to do. So this time I want to return a different fixture. In this case, one JSON. So let's see if we just do this kind of blindly. 
One way is to actually define the second intercept right before we use it. Okay, so let's say the same intercept, and in this case, we'll say 1. Okay, perfect. We can confirm that there are really there is one to do, right? We can confirm this is no longer first, this is second. We can wait for the second, second, okay? But it happens. So why does it work this way? When you define intercept, you define, you know, the first one, then the second. Cypress, when it sees a network call, matches those intercepts in reverse order, unless they're marked middleware, but don't worry about that. So when the call to GraphQL happens right here, right? It goes back and says, do I have intercept? Starting from the latest intercept. So this matches, returns a fixture, so it doesn't even go right here. Now, you might ask yourself, okay, can I refactor this code a little bit? Yeah, you know, this is all the same between the intercepts. So I would refactor it, and I'll say match, right? And here it's match, and here it's match. Okay, so it works exactly the same way. But then you might ask yourself, or ask me, can I define all my intercepts in one place? Because you don't know where it's going to be used. So let's say if we want to move this intercept right here, what happens? Well, this doesn't work anymore. Because notice what happened. We're matching the GraphQL call to, all to, to get all to do's on a visit, which matches the second intercept. It doesn't even get to the first intercept we intended to use. So here's how we can use this um, approach of defining all intercepts in one place and still get it to work. First of all, we're going to shift the things around. We're going to define them all in one place, but we're going to define the later intercepts first because they're matched in reverse order, right? So we want to use right here. So our first call is intercepted correctly. Our second call doesn't get intercepted because the first one is still applied. So to limit how this is applied, if we intend to use every intercept just once, we have to add one more thing. We can tell Cypress, use this matcher only, you know, once, twice, three times, and so on. So notice this intercept will match on the first GraphQL call that uses all to do separation name, and that's it. When you reload the page and the same call happens again, it will skip this intercept because it was already used, going to the second match. So now you can see that we achieved the same correct behavior. And you want to you know, add more responses, right? You can say, so this would be third, and we will return two items, and this would be fourth, and we will return three items. So now we can confirm that the different intercepts are used every time. Third, fourth, two items, three items. And just to make this a little bit clearer, right, I'm going to wait a second after each command just to make it sure that in video shows it. So you notice first match, second match, and every time we get more and more items on the page. So by using a better matcher, and specifying how many times you want to use that matcher, you can mock and stop your entire backend, even if you call, you know, using GraphQL uh, protocol from your application. And every time you can specify which fixture to return. Just make sure when you wait for the call, at least make sure you wait, because you want to confirm that that call really happens. And one other thing that I would suggest, if your application is sending data inside this wait, I would say, you know, confirm that the arguments sent from the application to the backend were correct. But you're not blindly returning next fixture for next step of the test.